years, the Temple Institute has been preparing the actual implements for use in the temple itself. Everything from the harps to the fire pans. Already completed, among other things, are a laver where the priests will wash their hands and feet, the altar of incense, a menorah, the high priest's garments, and a table of showbread. Right now, the location where the temple must be rebuilt is occupied by a Muslim shrine. To try to make Jerusalem less of a cup of trembling, other sites have been suggested where the temple could be rebuilt. But Solomon's original platform, which ended where the angle changes at this step, was a 500 cubit square. On the opposite corner of the Temple Mount, we can identify the other end of Solomon's 500 cubits, the seam where that spring stone juts out. And that places the Holy of Holies squarely where the Dome of the Rock now sits. In fact, there's a rectangular depression cut right into the bedrock inside that exactly fits the size of the Ark of the Covenant. And First Kings tells us that Solomon did level off such a place for it. When the Crusaders were in control, the edges of this rock were chipped away as relics to provide one more overpriced source of revenue for the church. So maybe it is best that the monotheist Muslims have controlled it in the meantime. This dome at least keeps people from just trampling on the site of the Holy of Holies. But one day soon, it'll have to be packed up and mailed back to Mecca. That's how Gershon Solomon of the Temple Mount Faithful puts it. He's the one who's tried over and over to actually lay a cornerstone for the third temple, and he's been called the man most wanted by the Palestinians. So let's hear what motivates him. In the last 50 years, 80% of all the prophets were fulfilled in this country. And we are back here. Don't forget it. Where are the Romans, the Babylonians, the Egyptians? Who is allowed to take Judea and Sumeria and Gaza? This country was given to the people of Israel to carry a special mission, an eternal mission. We cannot live regular materialistic life in this country. This country was given to carry the mission and we delayed a big moment. We gave back the holy place to our enemies. So who gave the permission to divide the country, to deal with it like customers? A piece of land for a piece of peace, false peace. And according to our old tradition, there are three conditions for the redemption of the people of Israel, for the coming of the Messiah. The first, the coming back of the Israeli nation, the Jewish nation, the foundation of a state of Israel, the second condition, who believed that it will happen before even 100 years. Again, a biblical Israeli state. And the third condition, the rebuilding of the third temple in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. It cannot be in another place. The third temple can be rebuilt and will be rebuilt on one place, the place of the first and the second temple, which is under the Dome of the Rock. But the political realities in Israel today are not the only thing holding back the fulfillment of these prophecies. The Apostle Paul said that those who are less bound by tradition than Yehuda should be the ones who, by our choices, make it easier to fit back together with Yehuda into one temple. And all the apostles together decreed that one of the ways to do this was to eat only kosher foods so we can all sit at the same table. But most non-Jewish believers would not even maintain this simple consideration. And the two houses of Yisrael became separated yet again.
Today we have an opening to reunite them, such as there hasn't been since then. But how can we unite if we don't recognize the same king? Yehuda was the first tribe to recognize David's kingship, just as the gospel was given to the Jew first. But after the usurper Absalom's revolt, it seemed Yehuda was the last to reinstate David. There's undoubtedly a prophetic parallel, and as Yeshua is again being recognized as a fully Torah-keeping Jew with the inherited right to David's throne rather than one aspiring to Yahweh's throne, more within Yehuda are willing to consider his actual claims. But any gains that this could bring would only be sabotaged if Ephraim were to continue to regard the Torah as a strange thing, as Hosea put it. Like the brother in Yeshua's parable, while refusing to obey the letter of the law, Ephraim has often caught on to its spirit after all. But it can no longer afford to be either or. The king is, after all, Jewish. And when the rest of his kingdom is ready to receive him in that context, the dry bones can come fully to life. For no matter what his blood pedigree, one is not counted as Yisrael unless he lives like Yisrael. <music> Yahweh wants a people who will not be satisfied to do the minimum and be saved by the skin of their teeth. The ones he commends are described in the books of Acts and Revelation as those who both have the testimony of Yeshua and are zealous for the Torah. His way of walking it out echoes Jeremiah's call back to the ancient path, where we will find rest for our souls. Jeremiah said to ask for the way to Zion. There are more signposts pointing us to it than ever before, because today there's another window for the time of the restoration of all things to begin. If we miss it, the sentence could again double or be multiplied seven times. Don't keep the king waiting that long for his kingdom. Take your place in Israel. <laughs>